actually changed my uh, title of the talk to having fun with music and Keras because I think that's, that's what it's all about. Sorry? Oh. <laughs> so, um, what's my personal motivation for you going to music and doing stuff with it? Well, I play guitar, and when I was studying playing guitar 20 years ago, I was listening to a CD, trying to figure out what notes were being played, push the rewind button, listen it over again, try it, try it, keep re repeating, repeating, it took so much effort. I was like, isn't there a computer program that actually can do this for me? What, what, why is there no computer program that can do this for, for me? But apparently it's very, very difficult. And right now with deep learning, we are actually getting close to, to tackling this, these kind of problems. And uh, so that's my personal motivation for looking into it. So today, what are we going to do? First, we're going to uh, uh, build a simple uh, synthesizer using just NumPy and some uh, Jupyter Notebook enhancements. Then uh, I will explain uh, just a little bit about music uh, theory and come up with a very simple way of generating, well, you, it, it sounds musical. Hey, it's, not, it's not the biggest new summer hit of uh, 2018. Let's, uh, let's be fair about it. It's just some music. And then use this generated, uh, so we, have a, we are going to generate data, and we can use it for uh, deep learning. So there's two, two benefits. First of all, we, we, we are in control of our own complexity, so we can make the, the, the sounds more distinct or more similar, but also we can, um, we, we have also an unlimited data set. We, we can just keep on iterating, and we know what the ground truth is. So that's, we don't have the effort of labeling our data, or that's all being taken care of. So that's why we take this approach. And also, it's way more fun this way, because then we can build some synthesizers in NumPy. Um, so what are we going to do with, uh, on the deep learning uh, part? So on, on synthesized music, I will um, single out a single instrument when uh, multiple uh, synthesizers are playing at, uh, together. So just filtering it out. Then uh, the second thing that I will be covering is um, detect when uh, what notes are being played, first for a single instrument, and then when uh, instruments are playing together, and when there are multiple notes being played by the same instrument. And then finally, I will extend that model um, to, 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 with multiple notes. And I also have a, I couldn't resist doing one real world uh, example where I've t taken a backing track, played some guitar on it, and tried to uh, find, to, to have a detector when I'm playing or not. Okay, so let's first make some with this. Uh, is this readable? Should I make it a bit, bit bigger? So first, let's have a look at what is music actually. So um, let's, let's, I've loaded here uh, some data, and if you look at the data, it just consists of raw, the raw data is just integers. Now what do these integers represent? The integers actually represent how far the speaker is going to move left or right. So um, since uh, the, the integers have a specific resolution, so uh, right now they're 16-bit uh, integers, and I'm, I'm going to scale them between minus one and one, being the, all the way to one end and all the way to the other end for the speaker. Um, well, if you look at the shape, it's just one big array, one dimensional array, because it's mono. If it was st uh, stereo, you have like uh, multiple channels over here. Then we also get uh, another quantity back, and that's called the sample rate. And that basically tells you how many samples uh, are uh, there per second. So every say there's this like, uh, with normal CD quality music, we have 44 kilohertz, and that means you have 44,000 uh, samples per second. So we have this, so if we would have 44,000 of these numbers, we would have one second of music. So we can plot them. Um, it looks like this. This is for a whole piece of music. On the x-axis, you have the time in seconds. Um, so there's an intro over here, some uh, bunch, uh, bunch of music over here, and then finally uh, some uh, intermediate part in the outro. Now, let's uh, just uh, zoom in a bit. And there's this very nice uh, IPython display uh, widget where you can just put in any array and just listen to it. It automatically also scales it to minus one one, so you don't necessarily have to do it. 
And then let's hope this all works. I'll, uh, so this is now what you find here below. <laughs> That's it. If we're going to zoom in a bit, I'm just going to explain you how difficult music is. Then we find something like this. That's all encoded in this part of music. If we zoom in slightly more, then this, this you should reconstruct from this mess of uh, stuff over there. That's really a difficult uh, uh, signal, basically. Um, if you look at, um, uh, so now we are going to, to make a simple synthesizer, right? We're going to make some, some own music. So let's start with a sign generator. Sign is just the, the most, the simplest um, periodic signal that we can think of. So we start um, uh, doing it in the data frame. We have some time, we sample it with the sample rate, and we're going to compute the, the, the sign of it every time step. Let's do it, then we get this kind of big blob, then if we zoom in, we, we see actually the sign back. And there's also a nice thing with, uh, there's, a free, there's a method called Fourier, and actually what Fourier do, does is it takes this signal, this, this signal, and it will determine what frequencies are present in the signal. So in this case, I've uh, made a sign with 440 uh, hertz, and you can actually see if we make a spectral representation for it, we see actually one big line of this 440 hertz. We can also listen to it, so let's do it. Not, not the most pleasant sound. But that's, that's a sign. No, it's not, not very musical at this point. So let's make a, let's put an envelope on it. Huh? So let's have an exponential decay of this sine wave. How does that sound? Already slightly better. It's, then um, let's add some multiple signs together. Nice thing about, um, about tones is I can, like if I have a sign of a, some frequency, I can add another sign of twice the frequency or three times the frequency, and it will still sound like, as the original uh, sign that I had. The same tone will still be perceived, but it sounds different. It has a different sort of timbre or a different feel. It's more bright or, it, 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 but it doesn't change the perception of the pitch. So let's try that out. So I've now again added, so here I'm, I'm just adding a couple of signs together, uh, like 440 hertz, two times, three times, four times, with some different random amplitudes that I've put in. I'm going to, uh, well, this is down the, the thing that we generate. Uh, in spectral, we see actually the lines coming, coming back, and then how does this sound? So it's still, and if you look at the, um, um, so th this is still the same pitch, right? So if we go back, it's the same pitch, right? Although we have added a lot of extra frequencies to it. So uh, what we also can do, oh, I've added over here. What we also can do is we can also just uh, give, give the signs random phases. So what, we, what I've done over here, is here you have, I've added the signs together with all phase zero. And then I did some random phases. So the, the, the shape is completely different, right? Will they say, still sound the same, do you think? Uh, sort of. Sorry? Sort of. Sort of, well. It's a bit late, this thing. This one. Do you hear a difference? It's exactly the same. So your, your, your ear is completely, uh, cannot hear the difference between this part and this part. So already for when you're doing deep learning things and you're looking at RMSEs and stuff like that, you have to take into account that, uh, that the RMSE might not be a very good uh, quantity for uh, comparing signals with each other. Um, well, let's add some decay on the additive sound. Let's do that. Uh, we have something that could, uh, it's a very simple electrical piano or maybe a harp or it's not be very beautiful, but it's, I can play something with it. Um, now let's have a little, just a, as a side, uh, side track, let's do some drums. So here I'm taking, um, 
I'm, I'm slowly going to uh, doing one over the inverse of the, the so the frequency gets much lower as we go on. And also I'm going to add some um, uh, exponential decay. Let's listen to that. This one, I have a drum kick. Then for the snare, I'm going to build a snare from a drum kick plus a bit of noise. So noise, I'm, I'm sorry, but we're going to listen to noise. <laughs> That's noise. <laughs> and if I add some, um, so the, 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 the kick and a very short bit of the noise together, we have something that's like a snare drum. So um, well, you can do a lot of cool things with just simple, uh, simple things, combining uh, simple things. There's another thing uh, that's called subtractive synthesis. It actually uh, starts with building uh, a very uh, rich waveform, uh, like a square wave has a lot of frequencies in it. It has a, so it's very frequency rich, as a, and then you, you actually cut out some frequencies in order to make it uh, you know, very, again, nice, uh, nicely sounding. So this is a, it's a bit like a Mario uh, computer game. That's without the filtering, and then with the filtering, it sounds like this. So there's a, there's a lot of different ways of, of generating sound. And there's a, there's also FM synthesis, which is a different way. There's also you can also try to model a complete piano with all the resonances and stuff like that. So. It goes, uh, goes on and on, um, but this is just a very simple way of building it. Okay, let's start, um, make some music. So who's aware, who knows a bit about music? I'm going to explain it anyway. Okay, that's, that's more, luckily quite a lot. So everyone knows this, this picture, right, of, uh, of a piano. Well, actually, there's, um, the, the nice thing about the white notes, the white notes are all in the same scale. Um, but let's, let's, I will talk about it a little bit later. So if you look at uh, the notes, every note in modern Western tuning is very easily calculated. Uh, so you have just this, the twelfth root of two to the power of n, where n is the, the, the number of st half steps away from some root note. And a half step is like going from this to that to this to that, this, that. That's a half step. So if you want to know the, this, the, the, the frequency of this note, I'll just count back how many, how many I'm away from, from A4, say that's this note, then one, two, three, four, uh, add that into this formula, and I can compute all the frequencies of the piano uh, that are there. There are different ways of tuning, but this is the simplest one. So, um, well, I've created here now a, a small instrument uh, from the, 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 the things that we did in the previous uh, uh, notebook. And I can just generate now a note. That's a note. But now let's have a look at a scale. So the scale is basically a groups of notes that fit well together. So do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, everyone knows it, right? Well, I, you can easily. That's do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And then we can also make, for every uh, note that is in a scale, you can also uh, make a chord out of it. So you can also do that mathematically. So that's pretty. So that's... Um, <laughs> So now we have this, this, this kind of rules that govern together which, which notes sounds musical together. Well, we can just make some random walk in like this scale and then mix it together and try to find out something that, uh, that, that fits well together. So, um, but first, of, uh, first I will put a chord progression below it uh, just to, 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 to listen to. Um. So, but I should first say this. This chord pro I took this chord progression because it's like the most common chord progression in pop music, and I uh, just decided to go for that one again. Mm -hmm. 
So you probably all know a song that fits with uh, this, uh, I suppose. So now um, the notes are just, um, I'm going to generate some notes on top of this, and this is just going to be a random walk. So of course, I, can, uh, I don't want my notes to sound too high, and I don't want to sound them too low, so I'm going to have a bounded random walk. So whenever I'm going to draw a new note that is above the, the limit, I'm going to bounce back and, uh, and, and go back again. So that's the way I do it. And I'm also going to, um, so there's a, a lot of, uh, some probabilities of making the random walk. So I will never stay on the same note. And there's a, quite a big chance of going to a note that's close to the other note. And there's a smaller note, the, the smaller chance to making a big, uh, big step and, and so on. I just tuned this a little bit by hand until I thought, okay, this is sort of acceptable. Well, if you take the random walk, and I've, if I just index it with the, the, the scale that I put in, I just get a, a lot of, uh, well, notes. And then I can just generate those notes and mix it together, and then we get something like this. This can go on like infinite at uh, infinite time. Sounds like better than the summer hit. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> even better, yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, let's go. Um, so now that we have this um, infinite data set, I'm going to uh, the deep learning um, applications. And the first thing I will do is to filter out the lead instrument. So in the previous uh, sound fragment, I uh, had the, 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 the chords and the melody. Now I'm going to learn uh, the, the, the algorithm to get this melody and regenerate the, the only the, the melody again. The, the chords plus melody and go to only the melody. So in model is input wave with three instruments, output wave with just one instrument. And actually, um, one way of doing it is to do it to do with outer encoder, uh, outer encoder like. Who knows what the outer encoder is? Mm, okay, so I will uh, just uh, go quickly over it. An outer encoder is um, a neural network where, which um, goes from from an input, like for instance, it took in this case a picture, uh, and the picture will go through a set of layers. Then it will go to typically to uh, a, la a layer that has less dimensions than the original layer, and then it will scale back up to the original input size. So you, you get this picture in, and it has to, so that you train it by giving this picture in and the same picture in uh, as, a, as a result that it has to produce again. So then it will learn weights to, to actually come up with a, comp a way of compressing it, such that it, it makes it also easy to, uh, to uh, to generate it again, back again. So this is the outer encoder. So outer, one, of, one of the things with the outer encoder is like an, 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 an architecture that has the same input nodes as the output nodes, and you train it with the same, as the, uh, same input as the output. Well, we can actually do something similar, but instead of um, using the um, original and the, uh, the, 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 the input the same as the output, we can say, well, I'll take the input, the complete uh, wave with the combined instruments, and as an output, I will just only give it the, the, the melody. So this is the input. And this is the output. And this is how we build it. So we start with uh, a model, uh, like a Keras, uh, Keras model. Um, then I'm going to add a dense layer, which is, um, I'm going to, I should have mentioned that before. Um, so I'm, the music, I cannot, music is like a continuous signal. Right? It goes on, it goes on, it goes on. So we have to cut it up in some way. So what I did is I, I cut the music up into small fragments of 1,000 samples, 1,024 actually. Um, and then I would, um, uh, on this fragment, I would just filter out the lead instrument. So that's what I'm go doing, uh, putting in here. So there's a 1,024 samples going in. Then I have a, a, 
um, a Prelude layer, just uh, tried out different things, but this, this worked best. Then we have uh, another dense layer, so this one is smaller. I took the half of it. And then we're going to scale up again to the original uh, output shape. <coughs> Trained it on the targets and the outputs. And how well, how does it sound before? It's like this. Maybe have a bit shorter uh, fragment here. <laughs> I see people sitting like this, <laughs> but um, not not so much. So the network still has to learn a lot, right? I must say that actually in um, in generating this part of the music, I'm still putting in the original uh, wave format, but then chopped up in batches of 1024. Yeah. So actually, um, what I'm doing is I'm. I'm I'm taking the, 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 the I'm, I'm doing the batched ways, batched way, and then I'm shifting also half by half, and then I'm f counting, uh, adding them together with uh, like uh, crossfading. So that's, uh, indeed, that solves it. Um, so I also uh, will fit the, well, th this one, what's the original title? So actually you can fit a model in two epochs. Um, that's it, that's how it looked like. And let's see how it sounds. And this is can even uh, that's so that's uh, that's it. Is it overfitted? Uh, I would probably if you just have the uh, this data set. Uh, it's very likely to be overfitted, right? Um, so what I did here is I um, generated the data set again, right? so just a totally new data set, and also put in a different, uh, different type of um, scale here. So I trained it on uh, a minor scale, and this is a, this is a, a major, no, it's Phrygian harmonic, uh, I believe, um, Phrygian dominant. Um, so it's a different scale, and let's listen to it. Still a bit of noise uh, left in there. Uh, main, it's, it's, that, uh, that still needs to. to yeah, that, if you train it for longer than two epochs, you get more. Uh, okay, you get, get better uh, results. Um, yeah, um, and also I can al also make the epochs really, really long, of course. Uh, if infinite amount of data. So um, let's go to um, another um, uh, part. And that is the note detection. So uh, right now we're going to detect what notes are being played. Um, so here uh, the model is going to be wave in sequence of detected notes out. So the method will here be, so generate some random music, chop the wave uh, data again in small batches of one tenth of a second, then use Fourier, uh, Fourier as the way of getting to the, the frequencies that we saw earlier. And um, then um, for each of these batches, um, we're going to predict what note is being played. Then we're going um, to write this, uh, this as a multi-class uh, classification problem. I will uh, show you in more detail later. And then each class uh, is going to be one note is being played. And I will train it as a gate and recurrent uh, unit as a classifier. So um, for generating and rendering the data, so what I get is a, a, a data frame where um, well, I take the, the original uh, data that I, uh, the, the random walk. From the random walk, I will basically make a data frame that looks like this. I have an offset and an end, and between those two, I, I have one hut encoded, so basically, well, it's not necessarily one hut, but I've listed what nodes are being played in this, in this sequence. Then finally, I'm going to match, match my batches to one of the offset's ends, and then I know, okay, this node's being played or not. So if you look at the Fourier uh, analysis of, of, of a waveform, it looks like this. Yeah, so actually you can already see here the, the individual notes, you can see it back. For, for, um, for, the, 1D, uh, for, for the one 
uh, one instrument. You also see, it's, I don't know if it's very visible, but there's like the same pattern is also repeated above here. And it's like at three times the, the frequency. And that has to do with uh, the, 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 the extra notes that I sh uh, showed at the beginning for the adding the additional signs to it, to the or, uh, original um, uh, note. So setting up the, the group. So um, who has ever used a gated uh, recurrent unit before? Who knows a bit about recurrent neural nets? So um, I'll just quickly go over maybe a short introduction to it. So um, let's, uh, I will only keep it at a recurrent neural net. Um, so what is, what's recurrent neural net? Uh, you start in with some input x, then um, that will go to a hidden state uh, h, and that will produce an output o. So what, what, we, um, what, we can, uh, what you can see is like if you have a sequence of, of, um, of, of x's, then you will uh, basically update every time the hidden state here. So this one will update it over here, this one will update it over there. And then this will, uh, is a very good way of accumulating evidence for a specific, uh, um, for a, uh, for a specific uh, uh, feature. Uh, you don't, uh, it's, and you can also uh, do this on randomly uh, sized uh, sequences and stuff like that. Um, um, yeah, that's what I wanted to sell, uh, say about it. So I am, um, since um, I can, uh, I know that I've uh, generated um, data with only 14 different nodes, I'm uh, using a 14 dimensional uh, uh, state. So that's also the, the same number of nodes that can be played. So um, I have uh, put the number of time steps to one uh, uh, and I put the RNN stateful, which means that it will, it will keep on uh, remembering what it has seen before. And then finally, uh, I, um, I, I will um, apply the Fourier before going into it, um, and I'll show you the dimension, uh, the the the, the, model, the modeling building over here. So um, this is the, the number of channels that I um, there's a, for a great gated recurrent unit. You basically build it up with a number of steps per batch. And so you 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 basically chop up your original signal into batches then in that batch you have a number of time steps per batch, and then you have a number of channels, which for typically raw wave, for, uh, wave files is only one, but since we are now giving it a Fourier uh, input, it will be actually a lot of frequencies per time step in this case. So we have a slightly more complicated input over here. Then we have uh, the gated to current unit. Uh, we put at the end a dense uh, layer just for compensating, uh, being, uh, being able to fit it a bit easier. And then we have uh, input over here. Uh, 32 is a batch size, just one step per, uh, so one Fourier spectrum per time step, 2049 Fourier dimensions, and then our gated recurrent units. And finally, we have our um, network predicting which one of these 14 nodes are being played. And we use the categorical cross entropy for uh, fitting it. So this is uh, fitting it, uh, typically Keras output. And then if we um, look at the, the prediction, so if we, this on the, the right is what we put in. As a function of time over here, we see what note is being played as a yellow blob, as a punch card basically, and this is what it predicts now. So this is only after just a little bit of fitting. Okay, so this is actually, was the, the easy, um, Easy one. If we, by the way, if we test it, we see that it also still works. I must say that if you train this a lot longer, it starts to look a lot better. And I'll actually, I will do that for this one. We're going to make it a bit harder now. And instead of looking at a single instrument, we're now going to look at the combined, the, the whole sequence of the music that I uh, displayed earlier. So we're going to add a, a chords and bass instruments. So this is how it sounds. And, add, and we're also going to add harmony. So the 
the, 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 the lead, the melody instrument is going to play two notes at the same time. That's, that, that's the music. This is how the Fourier spectrum now looks like. So, so this is also what I'm going to offer to my uh, uh, network to, to fit on. And you can see over here, it's messy, right? It's really messy. I can, it's hard for me to find out what's being played. Although if I look a little bit higher, I can still find the dots there. So the information is still, in a way, it's still there. But it, it's really hard to find, for instance, to, to come up with business rules that, 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 that uh, capture this problem very well. So in this case, I'm still using the same, um, the same uh, um, uh, network topology. I think I've did, um, if I look here, I split, I uh, did it half, uh, the time frequency is ha uh, twice as big. And then let's fit it, get some coffee, and it looks like this. And so this is uh, after a lot of iterations. It's actually, it, it finds it, uh, as you can see, it, it finds it back quite well. Uh, every now and then they're still uh, like uh, very close to the notes, it's, it's not, not completely confident. You see over here sometimes, so when it's close to, 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 to um, to, to uh, the part where it's really difficult. Uh, so if you, if you remember this part, right, that corresponds to this part. So it, it really has done quite well at this part. Well, okay, if we get a bit of coffee and it looks already this good, um, what will happen if we train it for one night? It actually does it almost perfectly, I would say. So that, um, that's that. Um, now the final uh, thing is um, let's let's do it on the real music now. So and uh, the, the the case is can we detect when a music when an instrument is playing? So we're going to load a bit of data and this is uh, I, I played some music over a backing track and there's a full mix and there's uh, so because I played over it I can also just mix down only the guitar and I have the the two separately. Now what I'm going to do. First of all, we have a big, a big issue of detecting when is the guitar playing solo. So here, we, this is only the guitar part. And uh, first of all, I cannot say if the guitar is below zero, I'm not playing. Because it means um, uh, uh, they're, they're, the guitar goes, uh, the, 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 the waveform goes through zero all the time. Uh, so I cannot just say below some threshold, it's not working. So I'm, instead of that, I'm, I'm calculating the rolling RMC. And when the rolling RMC is dropping be below some level, I'm going to gate it. And so I'm going to stop um, um, saying the guitar is still playing. So if we just, um, and so in the, if, if you look in this graph, if the time, the guitar is in, in, in blue, in, um, you see the original, so the mix, uh, mixed waveform in gray, and you see the rolling RMC in the, the orange, and whenever I'm, the, 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 the green line is just one and or zero, whether I'm playing or not playing. So um, I'm, I can um, basically um, mask the signal with the, the zeros and the ones. And so I'm, I'm going to, to, to multiply the signal with, with zero when I'm not playing or with one if I'm playing. And then we can actually hear the effect of the, the gate. It detects when it's not playing or not playing. Sometimes it's a little bit of a jitter, but uh, that happens when the, yeah, that just happens. Um, now we are going to build a model, and we are, uh, we are again going to uh, chop up uh, in fragments of 0.1 seconds, and that's again going to be the time resolution. So I, I can either know I'm going to be playing the instrument or not within this time resolution. And for each fragment, we are going to detect whether the guitar is playing or not. So we have, yeah. so we have a short fragment, uh, which is um, 0 0.1 seconds. Then we have the model, and we are going to predict playing or not playing, a Boolean. So this is how it looks like. Um, so I'm taking an input over here uh, with the fragment length, which is 0 0.1 second. Then I'm actually, 
one, one very nice thing about uh, TensorFlow and Keras is that you can still um, apply um, some specific functions within uh, Keras. So instead of first doing Fourier by hand before, I can also say, well, um, have apply a Fourier somewhere in the middle of my network and calculate even the gradients of the, that operation. And so you can have a look at, at what kind of uh, transformations are still in, in TensorFlow or in, in, uh, that you can actually just do some nice things inside your model instead of in the pre-processing phase. Um, so here I'm actually doing the, 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 the Fourier inside the model with a lambda. And this is the, uh, the, 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 the output shape will be then uh, the, 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 the fragment, will still be the fragment length. And finally, I'm going to put on that a dense layer that's just going to have with the sigmoid activation, so it's either a zero or a one. And I'm going to predict whether uh, I'm playing or not. So the model then, hey, you see, this is the, the time domain, the wave function. This is the frequency domain, like the, the stripes. And then finally, yes or no. So actually, the nice thing about it is we can actually listen to it and watch at the same time. So I made, uh, does anyone know MoviePy? It's definitely a package that you want to check out because uh, there's a very nice function where you can just, uh, you can just make, uh, make a frame given uh, some time that you, uh, so, so, some, some value, some X, and then you can render it to a movie very easily. So I use this for, um, for uh, the, the, these, these movies. What we're going to see is we have the waveform and we are going to have a sliding window going across the waveform. And as the, the waveform progresses, I'm going to light up blue whenever I detected the, 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 the note was playing. Then we have also the green line with the gating, yeah, whether I'm playing or not, as well as the prediction in orange. Slow. Okay, I'll open it differently. So you'll hear my, me fucking up. <laughs> That's it. Okay, I think we've got a few minutes for questions. I think I saw your, you first. Hey, um, thanks for your talk. Uh, I'm really curious uh, how fast can the network figure this stuff out? Like, would it be applicable for music visualization? Because with electronic music, it's fairly easy to do mm -hmm. stuff, beat detection, etc. but classic music or acoustic is kind of hard. So would this be useful for that case? Ooh, that's, uh, well, with music, um, so, 
people have a very good uh, internal clock for when it comes to, have a very good internal time resolution when it comes to uh, music perception. So you need to be really, 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 uh, you have a, to have a very short latency. So for instance, already the rendering, you need to be able to do it within like order of 16th of milliseconds. And so I don't know if uh, a lot of people probably did see a little bit of a desync between, uh, between the USB, uh, well, Already there, you, it's very, humans are very perceptible to, to, to small uh, latencies. So I think it, it, in principle it would be possible, but you, yeah, you, you would, uh, it, it's not going to be easy. Well, um, for, for what we see right now, I don't know actually. Um, so, but I know that, that latencies of 20 milliseconds are, is, can become noticeable already. Especially when you're uh, making the music, eh? so if you're uh, playing uh, an instrument and you have a latency of 20, 20 milliseconds, you'll already start noticing it. But that's when you're playing it. If you're just <coughs> listening to it and, and, and seeing it. Of course, uh, with, with electronic music, uh, you can already pre-process it probably, right? So you can pre-render it, I suppose. Um, but for, for real uh, live music where there is... Uh, uh, people playing live on stage with no backing track or whatever, then uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be hard, I suppose. Okay, any other questions? Yes, uh, so how do you deal with more complexities like jazz where it's key changes? Well, key changes is, uh, well. I'll repeat that for the people. Uh, uh, <laughs> how to deal with more complex mo uh, music like jazz where there's key cha uh, changes? Uh, in principle, um, so now I've re really tuned my model to um, to the complexity of uh, of th that I have right now. So I have only uh, my my hidden state has only 14, uh, 14 neurons, which is exactly the, the number of nodes that I can draw from the random walk. Uh, in principle, you can still uh, enlarge it to like uh, the the complete spectrum of all different uh, uh, different uh, possible uh, notes on a piano, for instance. But then, okay, jazz music has still uh, a lot of like, um, eh, like uh, note gets gets uh, bent up, eh, like it it goes higher slowly. So it's in between or vibrato, uh, vibrato stuff like that. You have a lot of, um, how do you say, um, uh, additional things that color the music that you still need to to be able to uh, write down maybe or not, and or maybe can even harm you. Uh, for instance, vibrato could be, maybe be transcribed as higher, lower, higher, lower, and stuff like that. So. It's, it's going to be difficult, but I suppose that uh, actually the, the thing that I tried here right now is actually to make it simple and then build it up. Uh, so I'm actually not, not intending to stop it at this point and uh, slowly uh, maybe get some jazz going on. I think we have time for one more question. Um, so they, they are published. Um, so if you look at my uh, GitHub and then my name, Marcel Raas, you'll find it. And there's also uh, the, the whole synthesizer thing is also there. Uh, it could, could be cleaned up a bit, but that's so. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, are there any other questions? Or? If not, I'd like to thank Marcel. Give him a round of applause. <laughs>